All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 99. We are getting back into decimals. Today, we're talking about adding and subtracting whole and decimal numbers. So, a little bit of review here because we've done this before when we were talking about money problems, right? And we should already know this. If you're adding or subtracting decimal numbers, if it doesn't have a decimal number, we said that if one problem has a dollar sign and a decimal point, you got to write them all with a dollar sign and a decimal point. And once you have that, then you would just line the numbers up at the decimal point, right? So you'd have $12 minus $1.24. So this part was review. We already know how to do this. So let's take a look here. Every whole number, whether it's a money problem or not, can be written as a decimal by placing a decimal point at the end and zeros after it. If you had the whole number 12, you can write it 12.0 or 12.00 or 12.000. Nothing is the same as zeros, right? So you got to add or subtract any two decimal numbers by pinning a decimal at the end of any whole number, lining the numbers up at the decimal point, and filling in any empty places with zeros. So if I was going to try to subtract 12 minus 1 and 4 tenths, well, if I have 1 and 4 tenths here, I better put a decimal point on the end of that whole number. Then I'm going to go and take my 1 and 4 tenths, lining them up at the decimal point, right? And then I can get ready to go and subtract after I go and fill in empty places with zeros. Nothing is the same as a zero. But I'm going to need a zero here because this is a subtraction problem, and I'm going to have to go and borrow, right? So now that we know the three steps, pin a decimal point at the end of any whole number, line up the numbers at the decimal point, and fill in empty places with zeros, let's get ready to actually subtract. So this is the whole number two. I need a decimal point at the end of it, right? Let's go and have 1 and 98 thousandths lined up at the decimal point. Nice, neat, and straight. Fill in your empty places with zeros. I'm going to put a zero there. I'm going to put a zero here. I'm going to put a zero here. The secret to success is lining them up at the decimal point. So let's just bring that decimal point straight down so I don't forget about it. And it turns into a big old borrowing problem, right? So I'll borrow one from that two, pay that and turn it into 10. Cross 10 out, right? Nine up on top. Pays one to the 10. Crosses them out, right? It's nine up on top. A is 1 to the next 0, and now I'm ready to start subtracting, right? 10 minus 8 is 2. 9 minus 9 is 0. 9 minus 0 is 9. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So on a decimal number, you remember, we always want to start with a zero, even if there is anything there. So I have a final answer of 902 thousandths. Let's try this one again. I'm going to take the whole number 75 and subtract 58 and 4 tenths. So let's go and pin a decimal point on the end of the whole number. Even if the book has them written horizontally, we're going to set them up vertically, lining them up nice, neat, and straight at the decimal point. I'm going to go and draw in my subtraction line, 
And my last step, fill in empty places with zeros. The secret again is keeping everything lined up at the decimal point. And I'll just bring that decimal point straight down. So now I can start subtracting. Zero minus four, can't do it, can I? So I'm going to cross out, bring one over, 10 minus four, hey, that makes six. Four minus eight, can't do it. Gotta go and do regular old borrowing again. Cross out the seven, pay the four, making them 14. 14 minus eight is six. And lastly, six minus five is one for a final answer of 16 and six tenths, right? Check out this one. Eight plus three and seven tenths plus one and 19 hundredths. So I have a lot of moving around to do, lining them up nice, neat, and straight at the decimal point, right? Eight doesn't have a decimal point, so I better draw one in and fill in any empty places with zeros. So now I have three three-digit decimal numbers ready to be added nice neat and straight at the decimal point bring the decimal point straight down into your answer zero plus zero plus nine hey that's nine zero plus seven plus one hey that's gonna give us eight and lastly over here in the ones column eight plus three plus one that's going to give us 12 for a grand total of 12 and 89 hundredths. If you can remember the three steps, pin a decimal at the end of any whole number, line the numbers up at the decimal point, and fill in empty places with zeros. So that, my friends, is the end. You're definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper for the Socrative quiz, and good luck. Folks.